In this video, I'll show you how to replace duplicate values with blanks in Microsoft Excel and only retain the last unique instance of each duplicated value. Okay, so in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to replace duplicate values with blanks in Microsoft Excel. If you haven't watched that video yet, the link is available in the description box. And in that video, I went through how to replace duplicate values with blanks and only retain the first unique occurrence. In this video, I want to go through how to do the same thing, but only retain the last unique occurrence. So first a refresher on what I did on my previous video, which again, the link to that video is available in the description box. So I have a data set over here called order dates and it consists of a series of dates which are ordered in ascending manner. So the objective here is to remove all duplicate cells and replace them with blank. And in this case, I want to only retain the first unique occurrence of each duplicated data grouping. In other words, I want to only retain these records, which I'm highlighting right now, January 1st. And as I go to the next data grouping, I want the first unique occurrence of this data set as well. Uh, January 2nd, January 3rd, and that's it. And I want everything else to be blank. So first I'll show you how to do that. In order to achieve this, we need to use formula, which is currently displayed on the screen. So first I'll apply this formula to the range, then I'll briefly explain how it works. So here's how it goes. So as you can see here, this formula has returned the first unique occurrence of this data grouping over here, which consists of January 1st. And as you can see, this formula consists of an if statement and a count if statement. So what the count if statement does is it goes through all the records in the cells above in the referencing cell and checks if this value has previously occurred within our data set. So in other words, it goes through all the records above this reference cell and checks if that record has already occurred through this count if statement, of course. And since this first value has never occurred in any of the cells above it, the rec record has been returned. So if the record has already occurred, a blank value will be returned. But if it hasn't occurred, that means it's the first unique occurrence and that value will be returned by this formula. Now I'll go ahead and apply this to the full range and see how that works. So as you can see here, we got exactly what we wanted. We got the first occurrence of each data grouping in this data set over here. And everything else is showing up as blanks, as desired. And this is how this is done. But what if we want to do the exact opposite? So we want to replace duplicate values with blanks, and we want to keep the last unique occurrence of each data grouping. How do we do that? So I'll explain how to do that in this column here, column C, but just to clarify, this time we want the last unique occurrence of each unique data grouping. So in other words, this time, instead of uh, returning the January 1st that occurred first, we want the January 1st that occurred last. So in other words, we want this value over here, this value over here, and this value over here. We want these three values to be returned using the formula. So how do we do that? So to do that, first of all, we need our first formula and we need a helper column. So this could be done by referencing the previous formula which we applied to return the first occurrence. So here's how the formula works. The formula for replacing duplicate values with blanks and only keeping the last unique occurrence of each data grouping is currently displayed on the screen. But note that we have to have applied this formula in column B first in order for this formula to work. So I'll go ahead and apply the formula to the range and then I'll explain how it works. So uh, this formula consists of two if statements. So the first if statement here says that if the value in the next row in column A is null, then you have to return the value in the reference cell. That's because if the value in the next row 
in column A is null, that means we have reached the end of our data set. Then that's our first if statement. And our second if statement or condition is if the value in the next row in column B, which is the formula we already inputted to get the first occurrence of each data grouping, if that value is not null, then we get the value in a reference cell in cell A2 in this case. Otherwise, we get a null. That's why you can see this formula in our first cell, which, which we inputted in, has correctly turned a blank because this January 1st is not the last unique occurrence in this data grouping. But let's see what happens if we drag this formula all the way down and apply it to the full range. Here you go. You can see here that the last unique instance of each data grouping has been correctly returned. So that is January 1st, January 2nd, and January 3rd. So we got pretty much the exact opposite of the first formula. Uh, the, in the first formula, we got the first unique occurrence. In this column, we got the last unique occurrence. And of course, getting the last unique occurrence in this case is dependent on a first, uh, getting our formula correct for the first unique occurrence. And uh, using this basic if statement, could get the last unique occurrence of each unique data grouping. And that's how it's done. Uh, thank you for watching this video all through the end. I hope you found it useful. If yes, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and also turn on notifications so you won't miss out on my future videos. That's all for the day. Bye now. Thank <laughs> you.